Lesson 4.3, Interpret the Remainder in Division Problems. We can use the remainder in a division problem as the numerator, when writing the remainder as a fraction, as how many are left over, adding one to the quotient when only whole number answers make sense, or not use it at all when the situation only asks for a whole number. So remember, this is the dividend. It's how many in all. This would be the divisor. It's how many groups or how many in each group. Then we would have the quotient. If the divisor is how many in how many groups we have, then the quotient would be how many in each group. If the divisor is how many in each group, then the quotient would be how many groups. Then we have our remainder. It's our leftover. So 25 divided by 5 is equal to 4 with three left over. We have five groups of four with three left over, or four groups with five in them with three left over. When we solve a division problem that has a remainder, the way we interpret the remainder depends on the situation and the question. So interpret means to explain the meaning of. So depending on the situation, we might use our remainder differently. We can write the remainder as a fraction by using the amount of the remainder for the numerator and the divisor as the denominator. So here we have a very easy division problem so you'll understand what's happening. We have 7 divided by 2. Well, we know 2 times 3 is 6, so there are 3 2's in a 7, but there's one left over. We have one remaining. We can also write it like this, 7 divided by 2. This means 2 fits into 7 how many times? It fits in 3 times with 1 left over. Our remainder, 1, becomes our numerator, and the divisor, 2, becomes our denominator. We have 3 and a half groups. Sophia has seven cookies. She wants to share the cookies evenly with Tala. How many cookies will they each get? Well, we have seven cookies here, and we can put them into groups for Sophia and Tala. We can each give them one. Now they have two each. Now they have three each, but we have one cookie left over. If we split this cookie in half, they can each have half of a cookie, then they both have equal shares, they will each get three and a half cookies. We had a three with remainder one, the one became the numerator, the divisor two became the denominator, they each get three and a half cookies. Sometimes we'll only use the quotient when our answer needs a whole number. So Four people will fit into one roller coaster car. If 18 people want to ride the roller coaster, how many full cars will there be? Well, there's 18 people. Four people fit in each car. We do 18 divided by four. That's four full cars. Four times four is 16. We have a remainder two. This way, we only use the quotient. They don't want half cars, they want four full cars with four people in them. So that would be four full cars, and two people would have to wait until other people wanted to go to make a full car, wouldn't they? We could also add one to the quotient. We had four, we'll add one to it, to make five roller coaster cars. So all 18 people can ride, but now we've got four full ones and one only half full, don't we? We have 18 divided by four, that's the four people in each car. There's four cars, we have two left over. So we add one more car for those two leftover people, see? We can't cut the roller coaster car in half, so we just add one more car that is just not a full car. But then all 18 people could go, couldn't they? So that's when we add one to the quotient. 
we can use only the remainder of a division problem as our final answer. How many people will ride in the fifth roller coaster car? We had 18 people in all. There were four in each full car, which made four cars with two left over. So the answer to this one, this question, is just the remainder. There's two left over, so two people will ride in the fifth car. We only used the remainder for this problem. If an item cannot be split into fractions of one whole, we don't use the remainder. So here are some things that can be split in half. Food, like we split the cookie in half. We can even split measurements in half or thirds or fourths or fifths. We can split it up without hurting it. So we could have gallons and we can split those up or meters or miles. We can even split up time like hours and minutes and different increments of time. Things that cannot be split in half or split into fractions would be people or living things. You can't have a half of a person or vehicles, a half of a car. If you had eight people and six people fit in a vehicle, you can't have them drive a fraction of a vehicle for of the other two remaining people. It would have to be a whole nother car, wouldn't it? We'd have to have two vehicles. You can't have half of a sofa or half of a shirt. So some things cannot be split in half and some things can. We can use a remainder for word problems like this, but we can't use the remainder for problems like this. We would have to use only the quotient or add one to the quotient. So remember, as you're doing these division problems, we can use multiples, counters, or draw a quick picture to divide to help us. And we covered multiples in video 4.1 and drawing quick pictures in video 4.2, and there'll be links in this description for them. So now I have a few more word problems with remainders. This one says Sarah is knitting hat and scarf sets. It takes three hours to knit one hat and four hours to knit one scarf. How many hat and scarf sets can she knit in 24 hours? So the first thing we need to do is add the three plus four because it's a hat and scarf set. So it's three hours for the hat, four hours for the scarf. We find out how long it takes her to make one set of hat and scarf. Then we need to divide the 24 by that number of hours that it took her to make the set. So we have three hours to make a hat, four hours to make a scarf. So that's seven hours for each set. In 24 hours, we think, well, seven times three is equal to 21. So 24 divided by seven is equal to three, but we have a remainder of three. We're at 21, 22, 23, 24. We have a remainder of three. So Sarah can knit three hat and scarf sets that's for full sets. We only use the quotient. We don't need the remainder. We're trying to find out how many full sets she can knit. Tala has 29 feet of string. If she cuts the string into six equal pieces, how long will each piece measure? So we need to divide 29 divided by six. We think, well, for our six facts, six times four is equal to 24. So we know that would be four and she would have five left over, five remaining. From 24 to 29, we have a remainder of five. And we can write a fraction with the five as the numerator and the six, our divisor, as the denominator. We would get four and five sixths feet each. Now, how many more feet of string would Tala need to make six equal pieces that are five feet long each? And we think she has 29 feet and six times five is equal to 30. Six pieces, five feet long, that would be 30. And 30 minus 29 is one. So she needs one more foot of string and she can make six equal pieces that are five feet long each. 
Here's our last word problem. 39 students are going on a field trip to the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. There will be one adult for each group of eight students. How many adults will be needed for the field trip? Well, we think eight times four is equal to 32, but 39 divided by eight is equal to four with the remainder of seven. And there's eight students in each group, one adult for each eight students. So we can make 39 students as 39 counters, and here's one adult with eight students, another adult with eight students, and another one, and another one. So that's four adults with eight students each. Then we can just add one to the quotient, this four, and make it a five, and we'll have another group with seven students in it. So there'll be five adults. That way, all the students can go on a field trip and have an adult with their group. We just added one to the quotient for this problem. So when we're answering division problems, we might have problems where we only use the quotient, where we add one to the quotient, or where we only use the remainder. In our next lesson, 4.4, we're going to divide tens, hundreds, thousands by a one-digit number. Have a really great day, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.